Oh, we praise you and we thank you, God, for your word this morning. God, and direct God, and touch everything that's said and done. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd guide my mouth and everything we say and do will give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'll be taking my scripture from a scripture that I reference to a lot, but uh, the Lord felt uh, led me to, to touch on it this morning, to read it and uh, try to explain some things that he's made so real in my life. I talked about it last week, I think, but uh, I feel like I need to, to expound on it this week. It says it's in the eleventh chap or fifteenth chapter of Luke, in the eleventh verse, and he said a certain man had a two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, "Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me," and he divided unto them his living, and after many days after. And, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain filled his, bell, filled his belly with the husk that the swines did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion on him, and ran, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned before heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father, and I want you to get this, but the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. I want to point out that 22nd verse but the father said to his servants you know this young man I've told this story I don't know how many times and 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 it, it just it thrills me I mean it, it thrills me because I've said before you know I was that prodigal son but, but what thrills me the most about this whole thing is this young man, he went out and he done all that he done, made the mistakes he made, done everything, blew all of his father's money, come back just physically broke. Physically, materially, he had nothing. But it says, when his father seen him in the distance, said he ran fell on his neck and kissed him. And the young man had made a speech. Said he made that speech in that foreign land and then he came back and he, and he didn't get it all out when he told his father. He said, I've sinned against heaven and against earth and am no, and, and no more worthy to be called thy son. But then the 22nd verse says, but his father said his father just stopped him. He didn't, he didn't make reference to the mistakes he had made. Glory to God, he didn't shame the young man. There was no condemnation whatsoever put forth when this young man repented when he came home. But the father restored him. 
put clothes on his back, shoes on his feet, a ring on the feet on his finger, and killed the fatted calf and celebrated. And it goes on to talk about, and if you read it, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to have time to read it today. But you go on and and read that. And he said, my son was once dead and is alive again. That's that's a thrill to me. To know. That that my, that me as a, a dad, I might have over the years, I know I have, have have put condemnation on my children when I should have just loved them. And, and and this this is so sad to think that that religion has made God this way. Because I know for a fact when I turned back and repented, when I turned back and repented, my Lord forgave me. He, he wrapped his arms around me and restored me. That's a, that's, that's a thrill to a man that's been where I've been. That's a thrill for a, for a man to... To, to know without a shadow of a doubt that all the mistakes he's made is washed away. Now, they'll never be washed away in some people's eyes. But as far as God's concerned, they are gone. Never to be remembered again. Never to be brought up again. That's a thrill that you can witness. That's a thrill that you can receive this morning by coming to my heavenly Father, repenting of your sins, believing that God, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, accepting that as, as fact by faith, accepting that, confessing that, he was raised for your justification and you shall be saved without shame and condemnation. Now we as humans may want to shame people sometimes. We may have done it to our children. But I'm here to tell you today that my heavenly Father will never shame you for what you have done. He never will. He never will. He wants to love you. He wants to be the Father to you that you have longed for Him to be. That, that's, that's, oh, that's such a blessing. I'm going to read a very familiar scripture, and I want you to get this. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now get this 17th verse. It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory to his holy name. That the world through him might be saved. He didn't send Jesus here to condemn you. He's not standing at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. That when you come to him for him to condemn you, to shame you. Now, I know there's people, there's religious people in this world that probably has done that to you. But that's not God. I promise you that's not God. The 15th chapter of Luke is a portrait of the Father and His love for every one of us. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, that is true. But as I talk, spoke about it last week, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He, Jesus, 
was made to be sin by his heavenly Father that we might be the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus. He wants more than anything to restore you. If you've never been saved, he wants to redeem you. He's bought and paid for every sin that you've ever committed or you ever will commit on the cross of Calvary. 1 Peter 1.18 that, says that we're not redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. There's nothing in this world that can, pay, that can pay for the mistakes that you've made in this life. But Jesus came and he died on the cross, redeemed you with something that, that can't be bought or sold. The blood, his blood that was shed on Calvary is more, far more valuable than anything that we can acquire in this, in this lifetime. And he gave it all for us. Glory to his holy name. People, we've got to understand that. Religion makes this a shameful place to come and to come back to God. And that's not what God says it is. That's not what it is. This was a joyous occasion in Luke 15 when this young man came home and his father celebrated his homecoming. Now there, the, the brother made a big deal out of it, but this was here for an illustration of what we should not do as Christians and talk about all the past that people have had. You say, well, you're one to talk. You've got a big past. You're exactly right. But I know there's thousands out there that's just like me. That's just like me that made mistakes and feel condemned in their heart, ashamed of where they have been, and they don't realize. They don't realize what God wants to do for them just like he did for me. Glory to his holy name. He loves us. He cares for us. He wants us to come home. And all we've got to do is repent. All we've got to do is repent and turn to Him. He'll do the rest. Restoration is here for you this morning. Restoration in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of the world, is for every man, woman, and child on this earth today. I don't care what you've done. I don't care the mistakes you have made. Jesus died for you. One of the most freeing things that God ever told me, here a while back, months ago, he told me, he said, son, I love the abortion doctor just as much as I love the children he's killing. That's, that's love right there. And he wants to love you that much this morning. He wants to forgive you. And he wants to restore you and lift you up and love you. Please let him be your Lord and Savior this morning. Let him love you the way he has always wanted to.